Welcome to the music department at Hills Road Sixth Form College. My name is Kate Murdoch and I am the college's director of music and I'm fortunate to work with a team of four teaching staff. Uh, we have two support staff within our department, an administrator and a technician, and we're also lucky to be joined by a team of around about 12 instrumental and singing teachers. Within the department, we offer music and music technology A-level, and we're one of the largest centres in England for uh, those two subjects. And in addition to the opportunity to study either of those subjects at A-level, we offer a very broad and diverse range of extracurricular music making. So today's presentation is all about music A-level to introduce you to what the sort of outline content of the course is, and you'll be able to find a separate presentation with all the details about music technology A-level. I plan to give you a brief virtual tour of the uh, department to give you an idea of the fantastic facilities that we're fortunate to uh, work in. And at the end of the presentation, there's a short opportunity to hear a little bit of uh, music uh, in action in a, in a performance. So, as I mentioned, just an introduction to music A-level, which if you're a student who's taken GCSE music, it feels like a very natural progression of the three main parts of music that you will have studied at that stage. But don't worry if you didn't select music as a GCSE subject, and sometimes there are so many tempting options to choose from, it's difficult to fit them all in, uh, then it's absolutely possible to study A-level music without having done a GCSE. GCSE, you can just check the admissions criteria from the admissions team. So as I mentioned, what we'll do at this point is just take you on a brief walkthrough of the department's facilities to show you a range of both recording facilities, practice rooms and our main teaching and rehearsal spaces. <music>
So as with all A-levels at Hills Road, the A-level music course is a two year course and the main examination period is at the end of that second year. And the key skills that you'll be evolving, just as you may have done if you've taken GCSE music, um, are in performance, in listening work, in looking at various set works and doing what we call analysis of music, also looking at composition and harmony as well in a number of different forms. And this course forms a really good pathway into perhaps studying music at university or at a music college, also known as conservatoires. Indeed, you might take it as one of your subjects and be going on to consider a university course in a range of uh, different possible subjects. So the slide you're looking at uh, shows uh, our college wind orchestra in a performance at Ely Cathedral, which is a wonderful venue uh, to give concerts in. And just in outline on performance, you might have seen from admissions suggestions that grade five standard as you set off on the course is a good indicator that you will be able to thrive on the performance part of the course. You may be more experienced than that, but that would be a good benchmark to consider to tackle the performance component. And performance is compulsory at A level. If you decide to listen uh, and explore music technology, you'll find that although you might play as part of uh, being a music technology student, performance skills aren't actually assessed in that course. But for A level music, performance is an assessed part of the course. So you need to know that you're happy to be assessed when playing your instrument or indeed singing. And to have the support that you need for that component, it's really important that you're having regular lessons from a suitably qualified professional on your instrumental voice. You might decide to continue with a teacher you're already working with, or you may decide that you'd like to have lessons through the college. It's available, uh, lessons are available in a number of different instruments and also in singing. Composition, another part of the course, is a compulsory part of A-level music. There's a degree of choice within that, so you can cultivate your own compositional expressive voice and choose the particular style that you'd like to write in. There's a whole range of styles that you might decide to explore. You may have particular music that you love and want to work on something in a similar vein. We may want to explore something new as an A-level student. And we work very much in an individual way on uh, supporting you with your composition work. Students tend to ask if music A-level is the very academic course and that first bullet there just shows you that the performance and composition part make up 60% of the course. So you could say that A-level music is 60% practical and then the other parts of the course making up the 40% feel more theoretical, but as I mentioned should feel quite a natural progression from the GCSE stage. So analytical skills, theoretical skills are important and it's also really important that you are a music notation reader. So sometimes students learn musical instruments by ear and perhaps you've had less experience of reading conventional notation. You might be a drummer um, who's worked from drum notation and it's going to be really important that your conventional music notation skills are good and that you're happy to expand those if they feel a little bit more limited at the moment. Listening is a really important part of the course and although you may have particular styles of music that you love listening to and others which you feel a little more unsure about, it's going to be important that you're happy to explore listening to a really wide range of music, both what we call set pieces and also something that we call wider listening around those set pieces. So you're probably picking up from what I've said already, there are three main components and this slide just shows the weightings on each of those. So performance and composition equally weighted on 30% and then the single written paper, the paper that you would sit in May, June of your year 13 is then weighted on 40%. You can see on the slide there an illustration of somebody sitting with a set works anthology um, studying a particular piece and looking at the analysis of that piece of music. 
a little more detail about each of those components. So on the performing component, um, you are required to play or to sing for eight minutes, a minimum time requirement of eight minutes. You can do that on one instrument. You can do it on more than one instrument if you wish to. There are no extra marks for playing lots of instruments, but if you have two instruments or perhaps singing and piano, which you're equally experienced on, you may decide you'd like to split your eight minute programme across two different things. And you can also play in a small ensemble if you wish to. It so happens that most of our students prefer to go down a solo route at this stage, but sometimes bass guitar players or drummers may say, I would prefer to play in perhaps a small jazz quartet or in a small band setup and use that for my assessment purposes. So both those options are available to you. In the second year of the course, in order to access all of the marks available on the mark scheme, you need to be trying to brave presenting music of a grade seven standard. So you might find it helpful to speak to your current singing or instrumental teacher and say, do they feel that with the way that you're playing or singing is progressing, that you have the capacity to reach grade seven by the time you're a year 13 student. So it's useful to have that in mind as the standard that ideally you would need to be aiming for. And the final assessment of your performance work typically takes place in March of year 13. So you'll find that that part of the course is uh, completed ahead of the main June period when you're sitting written papers, perhaps in uh, other subjects that you're taking as well as your music written paper. A little more on the compositional side. So ultimately for A-level music, you have to submit two different compositions. And one of those I alluded to a little bit earlier. One can be to a brief which the exam board uh, produce. So they provide a list of six different options which tie in with what they call the areas of study. And you can do, if you like the sound of the briefs that they uh, produce in September of your year 13, you can run with one of the briefs they provide. Or you might look at them and feel less tempted and decide that you'd like to evolve your own compositional brief and that's equally valid. And as I mentioned, you can then write in any style which you wish to. So we've had students this year writing folk inspired pieces or film music inspired pieces or string quartet movements or jazz ensemble movements. Anything is possible. It needs to be something you're really interested in, which will allow you then to work in real, real detail to refine your ideas. And then in addition to your more extended composition, you're required to do what's referred to as a composing technique, which might be four part harmony, sometimes referred to as chorale harmony, which we study with all students in the first year of the course. You may decide having explored four part harmony and this works particularly well if you're a music technology student, you might like to do a remix task, which is a little bit more free. You need to have really good uh, technology uh, computer based skills to uh, to do well on that component. But that's another option which we will introduce to you a little bit later in the course and see if that um, appeals. And as with performance work, the uh, composition coursework is externally marked. So all of your coursework is externally marked by examiners and composition ultimately comes in in May of year 13. So the third component of the course, the particularly theoretical part, is the so-called appraising component, which, as I mentioned, is 40% of the course. And much of this component is based around your anthology of set works. And the two students you can see in the slide here are intently studying one of their set pieces. So some of the questions on the set works are essay questions. You have a choice of question eventually, and you can uh, choose from uh, three questions which one best suits you. And some of the questions are quite detailed listening questions based on those set pieces. So you really will need over the two years of the course to get to know your set works very well indeed. 
And in addition to questions on the set pieces, you have something called an oral dictation question, which will be a melody you'll have never heard before, and you have to have a go at writing down the pitches and the rhythms in that, and we'll help you to evolve those skills over the two years of the course. And you will also have an unseen audio track in the written paper exam, and through the written skills which you will have supported you to learn, you need to listen to that piece and try and write down aspects to do with its keys, to do with its chords, to do with the texture in that piece, and write a short essay based on that unfamiliar piece of listening which you hear. You'll need to purchase your own copy of the Anthology of Music to last for those two years of the course. So here are some of the particular composers and artists who are featured amongst the set pieces. We'll leave you to explore who they are and we can ask you when you uh, hopefully start the course that you may recognise some of them. And this slide then shows you the 13 set pieces which are part of the appraising component. You'll notice they're divided into six areas of study down the left hand side from film music to new directions. And then the composers and the actual pieces are mentioned there. We very much aim to provide interactive lessons, lots of group work, lots of partner work, lots of opportunities for discussion. Often lessons will feel quite practically based but sometimes you'll be busy studying those 13 set pieces. So there is plenty of analysis, lots of written skills are required, but you'll be supported to build those up if you've not done too much extended writing uh, so far. So we're really proud of the extracurricular music making which goes on at Hills Road, and this is open to all students across the college. You don't have to be studying music or music technology A-level to take part in our various different groups. Some of our groups require a short audition and we'll send you information about that audition process, but lots of the groups you can attend on an entirely voluntary basis without needing to do an audition. Two different choirs are happening, there are three different orchestras, a symphony orchestra, a jazz orchestra and a wind orchestra. There's a wonderfully creative folk roots group and there are all sorts of skills that you can do to look into radio show, to look into DJ skills. If you're not studying music tech as an A-level, you can take a music technology enrichment class and that's often a really good way of building up skills in a further area of music. We also collaborate with the Performing Arts Department in an annual musical as well. So lots of different opportunities. And if there isn't a group to suit your musical tastes, we're very happy to help facilitate you setting up a group and accessing music that you might like to perform. So we have a lively programme of concerts and other musical events each year. We do in the autumn and spring terms external concerts in venues such as Ely or perhaps King's College Chapel or the very lovely acoustic at the Cambridge University Concert Hall. We are also fortunate to have a lovely recycle room at Hills Road, which you hopefully saw briefly on the walkthrough video. And we do concerts in there, chamber concerts in there and more informal lunchtime concerts as well. And we have an annual carol service, which typically takes place in the University Church in the centre of Cambridge, Great St Mary's, or in a college chapel such as St John's Chapel. Every year we aim to do a concert tour. The photograph you're looking at is of the Jazz Orchestra and Folk Roots group on a tour to Mechelen in uh, Belgium. So we typically alternate a folk roots tour one year with a more classically based tour, typically from our chamber choir and chamber orchestra in the alternate year. And you'll see some wonderful destinations which we've been fortunate to visit over recent years. That typically takes place in July. So the slide you're looking at now gives an idea of how the music A-level results compare to national results. And this slide shows a number of different destinations which A-level music students have taken. 
So many do go on to take music related courses, but equally we have students who are going on to study computer science at university or sociology, French and Russian, a number of different possibilities. Some of our students who take music and music technology A-level might go down a creative music tech route at the next stage or a sound engineering course. So I hope that's given you a good outline flavour of the course. And to finish with, we've just got a short extract from one of our performances for you to enjoy. Thank you for your interest in the course and I hope you found the information useful.